learning objectives include what are antigens and their epitopes, and what are various antibodies classes. An antigen, by definition, is any foreign substance when injected into the body provokes immune response. More specifically, these antigens are called immunogens, and proteins are very good immunogens, are very good antigens. It doesn't mean that only proteins could be antigens, even polysaccharides could be antigens or immunogens, although they are poor antigens or immunogens. Now, this word epitope has to be defined. As you can see here, this is a bacterium. As a whole, we would call this as an antigen. But when we analyze antigen closely, you can see that these small uh, structures shown on the surface of this bacterium, like this is a, a rectangle or square, this is a semicircle, and this is a triangle. Basically, these shapes are representing various parts of the antigens, and each of them basically is called an epitope or antigenic determinant. It has been found that these antigenic determinants, minimum uh, molecular weight is about 10,000 Dalton. So if these molecules, these proteins and polysaccharides that are antigen, they have at least this much molecular weight, they could act as antigen or immunogens. In other words, that if a molecule weighs less than 10,000 Dalton, it will be a poor antigen. And if this is coupled to a protein, which we call a carrier protein, its molecular weight increases and it becomes immunogen. So the same molecule, which if bound or attached to another protein, which is a carrier protein, it would acquire a property of being an antigen. And before it acquired the property of an antigen, uh, it is called as a heptin. So heptin basically is a protein molecule. By itself, it cannot induce antibodies. But when attached to a larger protein molecule, it can induce making of antibodies. And uh, penicillin uh, is a very good example of such a molecule. So when a patient takes penicillin as an antibiotic during an infection, some people get allergic and they have antibody response that is generated against uh, penicillin. Penicillin molecule is a very small structure, uh, but it attaches to body proteins naturally, and it can induce antibody production. And those antibodies can later bind to penicillin. And because penicillin is attached to various cells with which it binds, uh, and those proteins act as a carrier, those cells get destroyed by these antibodies, and this results in allergy. There are certain properties of antigens that it should have a high molecular weight, as we mentioned earlier, that anything which is close to 10,000 Dalton is a good antigen. So larger the molecule, the better antigen it is. Second property is the complexity of the molecule. If a protein molecule is complex, uh, it would be a good antigen. Generally speaking, proteins are better antigens because of their complexity. It should be foreign to the body. There are many proteins in the body that body does not react against them. So any substance which should act as an antigen should be foreign to the body. Then this last property is also very important. The molecule that act as, a, as an antigen, it should be able to be degraded by the body enzymes. A uh, very good example of this degradability is that those patients who receive um, iron rod and metallic rods 
when they break their bones uh, by accident, that iron rod which is needed there to fix the bone uh, is inert. It is not degraded by any enzymes of the body. So although it is foreign to the body, but it does not induce any immune response because simply it is not degradable. Antibodies, if you define antibodies, basically they are glycoprotein in nature. And if you fractionate serum by electrophoresis, uh, you would find these antibodies in gamma globulin portion of the serum. Then different antibody molecules have different molecular weights. For example, IgM, it's a, it's a class of antibodies. It is largely confined to the blood vascular system because of its larger molecular weight. And IgG is present in the, the serum, in, in the blood circulation system, but it is smaller in the molecular weight compared with IgM. So this could be found in any body secretion, such as um, milk, saliva, um, body fluids, like in the peritoneal cavity, in the thoracic cavity, in all body secretions that are there in the body. IgA is another class of antibodies which is specifically found on the surface of the mucous membrane, like in our oral cavity, uh, in our saliva, in our tears, in milk. Uh, you would see IgA most uh, abundantly present. IgE is another class of antibodies uh, which basically is induced by allergens. Allergens are also antigens, but the consequences of these antibodies is bad for the body because it damages the body cells. Again, this is the structure of antibodies. There's a FC part, and this is a, a FAB portion which binds the antigen. As I mentioned earlier, that there are five classes of antibodies. If you look at the structure, this is a single molecule, one molecule of antibodies called monomer. If the antibody molecules are attached with each other through the FC part, like, like here you could see, uh, this is IgM. It's called a penta, pentamer because there are five different antibody molecules attached together through the FC portion. This is the dimer. This is IgA. It is also the FC part of this. These antibody molecules are attached with each other through a chain of protein called J chain. IgD is also monomer, and IgE is also monomer. So in summary, proteins are good antigens because of their complexity and their larger molecular weight. Uh, every antigen has antigenic determinants, what we call uh, epitopes. And antibodies are glycoproteins in nature, secreted by B cells, and there are five classes of antibodies.